The title for this companion and the collection of Imam al-Dhahbi rahimahullah ta'ala says it all about him. Al-Amir, Al-Nabi, Al-Jameel, Aba Amr, Jarir ibn Abdullah. Al-Amir, who is the chief, Al-Nabil, the noble one, Al-Jameel, the handsome one, Abu Amr, Jarir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Now usually the name Jarir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is a name that is kind of lost because he's mistaken often for Jabir ibn Abdullah, who's a much more famous companion radiallahu anhu, but Jarir is a very special man and someone who had a very special trait. Now, he was a man from Yemen and he was the chief of his people. And he does not come to embrace Islam until what's known as Am al Wafud, the year of the delegations. We're talking about nine years after the Hijrah of the Prophet from Mecca to Medina. And he hears the message of Islam from Yemen and he brings with him 150 people from Yemen to meet the Prophet in Medina and to embrace Islam. So, Jarir ta'ala anhu says about the Prophet famously, and this is probably the most famous narration about him. He says, مَا رَآنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَمْ مُنْذُ أَسْلَمْتُ إِلَّا تَبَسَّمَ فِي وَجْهِ The Prophet never saw me from the day that I embraced Islam, except that the Prophet smiled at me. Now, of course, the Prophet always would smile in general, but Jarir says, I actually cannot remember a single time that the Prophet looked at me without a smile. Now, of course, that's a trait of the Prophet but there's also a story to it with Jarir So what's his story? Rasulullah is sitting with his companions in the masjid in Medina, Masjid Nabawi. And in the middle of his speaking, the Prophet stops and he says, يَدْخُلُوا مِنْ هَذَا الْبَابْ رَجُلٍ مِنْ خَيْرِ ذِي يَمَنْ That someone is going to enter from that door who is from the best of the people of Yemen. And he described him, وسلم, he says, عَلَى وَجْهِهِ مَسْحَةُ مَلَكْ And his face has been touched by an angel. So Jarir anhu, he comes into the masjid and everybody stops and in complete silence is staring at him. So Jarir walks in, the Prophet is all the way at the front of the masjid. Jarir is coming and he's at the back of the masjid and everyone's staring at him. So he says to the person that's nearest him, he says, Ya Abdullah, O servant of Allah, right? That's the way they'd call someone they didn't know. He says, Ya Abdullah, Aqala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Did the Prophet Sallallahu say something about me? You know, he either said something really bad or he said something really good because it's clear that everyone is staring at me because of something the Prophet Sallallahu said. So the man told me what the Prophet Sallallahu said. So I said, Alhamdulillah for that. And he went on to embrace Islam and to become this companion of the Prophet in the final year of his life. Now, what does it mean to say that an angel wiped your face? You might remember the hadith where the Prophet mentions three men, a man who was bald, a man who was a leopard, and a man who was blind. And an angel comes to each one of those three men and gives them all a different set of risk, a different set of sustenance. But in the process of that, when the angel wipes the head of the bald man, the man has hair now. When the angel wipes the eyes of the blind man, the blind man can now see. And when the angel wiped the skin of the leper, the leper no longer had leprosy. So the ulama say that in the case of Jarir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, an angel wiped his face in such a way that there was no defect. It just beautified him tremendously. He had an extreme beauty to him radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And so anywhere he went, he attracted attention to himself because of the wiping of that angel on his face. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew what he was giving to this companion of the Prophet Some of the narrations, he says, I told the Prophet one time that I had a hard time keeping stable on my horse. He's the chief of his people and he would go out in battle and he said, I'm having a hard time staying on my horse. He said, the Prophet struck my chest and he said, Allahumma thabithu waj'alhu hadiyan mahdiya. He said, oh Allah, keep him firm, meaning on his horse and make him one who is guided and who others are guided through. So subhanAllah, the dua of the Prophet for a person is always better than what they seek from the Messenger وسلم, and he says, Wallahi, I never fell off of my horse again after that dua of the Prophet وسلم. What was his nickname? Umar al-Khattab called him Yusuf al ummah the Yusuf of this ummah. And Umar who praised him, he said, Ni'ma sayyid kunta fil jahiliyyah wa ni'ma sayyid fil islam. What a great chief of your people you were in the days of ignorance and what a great chief of your people you are in Islam. Now we don't find much from Jarir in terms of interactions with the Prophet وسلم. In fact, in fact, most of it surrounds his initial embracing Islam. He said, وسلم, I gave my allegiance to the Prophet of course, upon the shahada that there is only one God and that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. 
الصَّلَاةَ وَإِيتَاءِ الزَّكَاةَ and to establish the prayers and to pay the zakah وَالسَّمْعِ وَالطَّاعَةَ and that I would hear and that I would obey وَالنُّصْحِ لِكُلِّ مُسْلِمْ this is where it gets interesting and that I would be a sincere advisor to every Muslim that I would treat the Muslims with sincerity and so subhanAllah what we find with Jarir radiallahu ta'ala anhu had this power of persuasion because of the unique way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him and that an angel wiped his face and he had such beauty like Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu when the fitna broke out when trials and tribulation broke out and people started to fight and power struggles arose he was a person who said la uqatilu min qal la ilaha illallah he said listen the Prophet وسلم, sent me back to Yemen with very clear instructions. He says, I'm not going to fight people that say La ilaha illallah. And the ulama say that's the blessing of Jarir radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He had the persuasion of his beauty. He had the persuasion of his leadership. He had the persuasion of so many different things. How did he use his persuasion? He used it in da'wah. And that's why the ulama say the greatest virtue of him is that on the day of Qadisiyah, which was one of the most important battles in the history of Islam, a third of the Muslims that were fighting on the day of Qadisiyah were from the people of Jarir ibn Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala.